G'day Ziggy D here and welcome back for some more Evolve. In this match we have my fifth and final evacuation shoutcast. This time, as it always is, defense mode. We are going to have the Wraith taking on Val the Medic, Kabot the Support, Griffin the Hunter and Parnell the Assault. And since the Hunters won that all important fourth match, they are going to have improved turrets for defense in this defense mode, which is going to deal a lot more damage to those monsters. So the Wraith's going to have to play really well to be able to take out this series. So guys, let's jump on straight into it. Alright guys, welcome back. As you can see in the intro cinematic just here, the hunt, the Wraith is going to have to take out a series of cores defended by the Hunters in this defense mode to be able to uh, approach the final core to win this match. Now, it comes down to a time-based assault. Uh, the Wraith has a set amount of time to take out each core, and by taking out each core, he's going to be able to extend his time to try and win this match just here. Now, the Wraith, you'll notice at the start there, was, was supported by two too many Goliaths, and those Goliaths are actually the living siege weapons of this match. They will move forwards and attack the core, they will prioritize attacking the core until they too, take too much damage. When their health gets low, they will switch and attack the Hunters. The Wraith's primary focus in this game mode is to distract the Hunters as much as possible and to deal damage to the defensive turrets, stopping the Goliaths from destroying the core. So as you can see, the Goliaths have jumped on the core pretty early there, but with no support from the Wraith, they have gone down very quickly, and now the Hunters are seeking out the Wraith. The Wraith took a little bit of time to armor up, which is not a bad idea, because the Hunters in this mode can actually drop in as many times as they need. You can wipe out the Hunters as the Wraith, but they'll just drop straight back in. It all comes down to supporting that assault and destroying those cores. That has to be the entire focus. Trying for a bit of a sneaky abduction, mid-air abduction just there. If that had landed, that would have been a pretty good feeling. But nonetheless, jumps on the assault just here with the supernova and takes out the assault, already downing him. That's going to make this next wave of Goliaths uh, a lot easier. So the Goliaths come two by two. And the first one's down, there's going to be a short uh, pause, and then another two will assault. So this is a good chance for the Wraith to maybe take out some of the Hunters and make sure that that next Goliath assault is going to be a lot stronger. Now the Wraith has to be very careful though, because although the Hunters have infinite lives in this mode, the Wraith does not have infinite health. And because he starts this match at stage 3, he has no way of gaining additional health either. So he has to be very careful with that Hunter. He needs to play defensively and just pick apart the defenses as much as he can. Now the Goliaths are unfortunately taking a lot of damage here from... Uh, it looks like the, actual, the Trapper has dropped the dome perfectly, zoning the Goliaths out from actually being able to reach the core, it looks like. So uh, that's excellent play by the Trapper. And that's like one of the best things you can do in this mode as a Trapper. Tries for the Adduction there, gets Booker very nice. Nice. Going to be able to supernova up here and deal a lot of damage to him, but where did he go? He don't. He just. He just sort of slipped the wraith just there and moved underneath that building and managed to get away. So as the hunters, you need to be. Uh, you need to focus fire on those Goliaths. Those are the main priority. Damaging those as much as possible and just sort of repel the wraith as much as you can. As the wraith. Uh, aversing the Wraith, essentially, the big focus is going to be to take his armor down, because the Wraith's not going to uh, engage if he doesn't have a lot of armor. Grabs the Assault just there, the Assault is forced to use his personal shield there, and does manage to get away. Grabbing the Assault, uh, while he's still got his shield up, not really going to do too much, just sort of only interrupting the fire, but still not a bad thing to do, because while the Assault is being grabbed by the Wraith, he can't fire on those Goliaths. You can see the Goliaths hacking away at the core just there, but since none of the turrets have been down just yet, they're taking a ton of damage, you can see them going down very quickly. The Wraith's trying to pick apart the Hunter defenses, trying to find an opportunity, trying to find an opening, and hopefully if he does so, he'll be able to duck in and kill those turrets. Because your two priorities as the Wraith are, I would say, number one, to kill those turrets, and number two, to distract and take out those Hunters wherever you can. So the Wraith playing a little bit defensively here, realizing he has no, he has no armor. Now would probably be a good opportunity to go back and armor up a little bit, and uh, the Hunters are in a pretty good position at the moment. The core's only down to halfway, and the Wraith's going to have a hard time sort of uh, helping to take this, down, this first core down. Hopefully this match doesn't end with just the one core. The Wraith not really having, not really finding any opportunities here. Trying to grab the, me the Medic, and Medic just changes directions, and the uh, Abduction is not successful. 
Let's see if a Wraith can pull something out here. Now you'll notice that in this match, finally the Wraith has taken Warp Blast, and I think this will actually play a pretty big role just here. Dealing a bit of damage to that core himself. You can, as the Wraith, target the core yourself and help damage it down. I think that's probably your third priority beyond supporting the Goliaths. The Goliaths are going to deal the main amount of damage there, and you need to help them be able to do that. He jumps on the Medic just here, getting the Medic down. Uh, the support shields him for a second, it looks like, but uh, not quite. No, taking the Medic just down. And uh, now he's taking this opportunity to deal some damage to that turret just there. Destroys that first turret, and uh, this this is going a lot better now for the Wraith. That first core actually gets taken down there with the damage assistance from the Wraith and from the Goliath. So that's brought the Wraith some more time, and the Hunters will be forced to drop back to the next core if they want to defend the Assault just there. The Wraith kind of buying a little bit of time here, uh, messing with the Hunters, just sort of seizing this opportunity. But unfortunately, taking a lot of damage on his actual life, uh, he jumps on the Trapper just there, but he is shielded up, so even the sneak attack just there is not quite enough to take down uh, when he's shielded up by that support just there. That shield obviously being uh, laid on cru at the crucial timing, which is excellent work from the support just there. Now the Wraith is actually ahead of the Hunters, he's kind of buying some time for his Goliaths to close in on the core, and uh, this is not a bad play, but he is taking a lot of damage to his life, and it's going to make future engagements a lot more difficult. If it comes down to that third core, and he only has a couple bars of life, he's not going to be able to put too much pressure on. So using that decoy just there to go around the corner and buy himself some more time just there, but I do think the Wraith is best off dropping back just here. He's he is buying a lot of time, and a lot of damage is being put on that core, and the Hunters are way out of position. This is actually not too bad. Maybe it's been worth it, because the Wraith's going to be able to close in and get in there before the Hunters are, have a chance to drop back. You can see those Goliaths going absolutely ham on that core just there, but without the support from the Wraith to kill those turrets, they're not going to be able to do as much. They will get taken down eventually. You can see the Wraith now focusing on the turret, taking those turrets out, and the Goliaths are going to have a much easier time. Now, if those Goliaths get down into low life, they will stop attacking the core and they will attack Hunters. Clever Hunters can actually take advantage of this by getting them onto low life, and then kind of not firing on them so much. Now, it is a threat to the Hunters, obviously, but it does mean that no new Goliaths are going to spawn and there's going to be no damage done to the core. So, uh, it looks like that core has been taken down, though, and we've moved on to the third and final core. It looks like the Wraith play of keeping the Hunters distracted way back away from that core while the Goliaths just went ham on it was actually a pretty good decision. Uh, focusing on the Assault just here, but the Assault is being shielded up and has his own personal shield. He's not going to be able to get anything done there. Pop Supernova. Uh, he does have the damage amplifying beam on top of him, though, and with no armor and with very low life, probably not the best spot to engage. Puts the decoy around the corner there. The Hunters have no idea. And dealing a little bit of damage, what's the Wraith's play going to be able to here? Buying some more time, potentially. <gasps> going for the abduction. Grabs, looks like, the Trapper. Jumps on top of him, and he might be able to get him down. Oh, with the sneak attack follow-up, the abduction and the sneak attack. Very powerful combo. Pulls out the trapper by himself with no support whatsoever. Takes the trapper down. This is going to be very nice. The trapper's not going to be able to slow the movement of the Goliaths or slow the movement of the Wraith. Has an opportunity to take the assault down here. The assault just in time pops his personal shield, and the Wraith kind of loses track of him, realizing that he's not really going to be able to take him down. He, he drops back to help support his his uh, Goliaths, who are currently sieging the final core. You can see they're already dealing some damage to it, but the Wraith is going to have to get in there and uh, help distract a little bit, or even help damage it himself, or potentially take out some of those turrets. He's got a few options here, but with only two bars of health, it's going to really come down to the wire. I really think it would be, with six minutes, he's got plenty of time. He doesn't really need to rush this. I feel like the Wraith would be in much better shape to drop back and grab some armor. But the Wraith is feeling confident. He's got a little tiny bit of armor just there. Regening a little tiny bit of armor. He's going to take out some of these turrets here, which are currently focusing the Goliaths. Remember, those turrets do have additional damage as well, so they can deal quite a bit of damage. Tries for the abduction on the weakened assault there. Just misses. The Trapper Dome goes down as the Trapper drops back in. As you can see, that respawn timer, very, very short in this game mode, so the Wraith has to act quickly if he takes out a Hunter. The healing beam from the Medic is on the downed, uh, I think that was the Assault just there, decides to switch targets to the Medic, abducts the Medic, and is going to be able to supernova and go attack both of them at the same time, the downed and the uh, Medic at the same time just here. Focusing on the Medic, uh, stops the revive just there, cancels the revive from the Trapper on the Assault. With no Assault, oh, but the life is so low! With no Assault, the damage on the Goliath is very low. The Wraith is going for the kill just here. His life is way too low, though. He needs to break line of sight, or he's going to go down before the core does. The core is extremely low. With only a slither of health, though, the Assault coming around the corner just there. The Assault's going to be able to deal the damage to kill the Wraith here if he's not careful. Oh, that is the Medic. He jumps on the Medic, but the Medic is going to take him out. Too much damage, and the Wraith goes down with only a fraction of health left on the core. 
that was exceptionally close. I do think the Wraith played way too aggressive there, because if he had backed off and just grabbed a little bit of armor, the Goliaths themselves would have been able to siege it down a good deal there. They weren't taking too much damage, they were putting on a really good uh, siege there, and the Wraith would have been able to just poke at them and just distract them long enough for the Wraith, for the Goliaths to do the damage needed to take that core down. With six minutes remaining, questionable play there, and it did cost the Wraith the game. And we can see there, we can see the scores being tallied up. So the way the evacuation game mode works is it's a campaign series of matches. And essentially bonus XP is awarded at the end based on the performance in each of the matches. That defense mode at the end there, that defend mode, awards the majority of the survivor bonus. So I think the Hunters actually closed that out by about 100 or so survivors just there. So we'll see. You guys get to enjoy this little sort of uh, ending story recap. Uh, basically showing kind of how things went down as the Hunters win this final fight. And uh, I guess it all really comes down to that final evacuation, that defense mode. And uh, although the Wraith performed admirably in the first three matches, losing out that fourth match uh, made that final game mode a little bit harder and then just wasn't quite able to take it. Make sure you guys stay tuned because I will be no doubt bringing you guys more evolved commentaries in the future. But that is it for now. I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching.